Hi kids, welcome to another Kids Central Online. I'm so glad you've joined me on this beautiful Sunday morning. I don't know about you guys, but March is one of my favorite months. And that is because there's always so much more sunshine. We look forward to spring beginning where the trees start to blossom and flowers start to bloom and birds start to have babies and are singing their beautiful songs. So along with a new month comes a new memory verse. We've already studied El Shaddai, God most powerful, almighty, Jehovah, God eternal. And today we are gonna be studying Jehovah Rafi, which means God, our healer. So the verse we're going to be talking about is found in Psalm 147, verse 3. I'm going to say it to you, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about it. He heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. Psalm 147, verse 3. Now, you may already know this, but... God has demonstrated or shown us in the Bible that he is capable of healing physical sickness. In fact, Jesus, when he lived life here on earth, he healed many people. He caused the blind to see, the lame to walk, the leper to be clean. He even raised Lazarus up from the dead. Jesus showed us because he was fully God and fully man. He showed us that God can heal our sicknesses and he still does today. Here's the thing though. God doesn't always heal every person's sickness. God has a great plan and he sees all, the whole picture he sees the beginning of our lives all the way to the end. He understands what is absolutely best for us. And sometimes that means that we're not healed of our sicknesses. But there is still hope in this verse. See, every human being since the time of Adam and Eve choosing to disobey God in the garden. Every human being is born with a sinful nature. It's a nature that is broken. And it's a nature that separates us from God the Father. Well, in this way, God is our healer. He sent Jesus who came and lived the perfect life, died the death that we deserved, received the punishment that we deserved, and that makes it possible for us to come back to our Heavenly Father. Our greatest sickness, that sickness of sin and brokenness and evil, that heart of rebellion is healed through faith in Jesus Christ. That separation that our sin caused from God the Father is healed because we are made his children through faith in Jesus. God is our healer in that way too. So we're gonna be talking and learning this verse in the month of March. It's a wonderful verse to think about and remind our hearts of. So today, we are going to continue the story of Moses, and we are at a very exciting point in the story. We're going to be reading out of the Gospel Story Bible, and the story we're going to be reading is called God Sends Plagues Against Egypt. God hardened Pharaoh's heart and he refused to let the Israelites go. 
Because of this, God told Moses to strike the water of the Nile River and turn it to blood. Moses obeyed the Lord and the Nile and all the water in Egypt turned to blood. God was demonstrating his power to Pharaoh through his servant Moses. Now there was no water to drink. But when Pharaoh saw that his magicians could do the same thing, he refused to let God's people go. Seven days later, God sent Moses back to Pharaoh. Moses said, thus says the Lord, let my people go. If you refuse, I will fill your country with frogs. Again, Pharaoh refused. So Moses turned to Aaron and said, stretch out your staff over the rivers, canals, and pools, and make frogs come up out of the land. When Aaron did, suddenly frogs were everywhere. Pharaoh pleaded with Moses to take the frogs away, and he promised to let the people go. But once the frogs were all gone, he changed his mind again. Next, God sent a plague of gnats, those are tiny little flies, to Egypt. The gnats attacked the Egyptians but left God's people alone. Pharaoh tried to bargain with Moses. He said the Israelites could go offer their sacrifices to God in Egypt. But Moses said that the Lord's command was to let his people go. The Lord wanted his people out of slavery once and for all. Finally, Pharaoh agreed, but when the gnats were gone, he changed his mind again. The Lord brought plague after plague to Egypt. These plagues did not affect the children of Israel who were living in Egypt. They only affected the Egyptians and Pharaoh himself. God sent flies, caused the Egyptians' animals to die, made the people sick with boils, which are these big, painful sores that they got all over their body. He sent hailstorms, then swarms of locusts that ate everything in sight. And even darkness covered the land. As he sent plague after plague, God was creating a story for the Israelites to tell their children and grandchildren. By the time God was finished with Pharaoh, everyone would know God's mighty power and share the story of God's victory. But in spite of the plagues, Pharaoh would not listen. Again and again, he hardened his heart. He kept trying to bargain with Moses, but when Moses refused, Pharaoh told him to leave and never return. Otherwise, he would die. There was only one plague left. After that, God said Pharaoh would obey. Did you know that the plagues were especially designed by God to show that he was the true God over Egypt? You see, Pharaohs were very powerful rulers. And in Egypt, Pharaohs were thought to be almost God-like. And the Egyptians believed in many different kinds of gods. But God was showing them, Pharaoh and all the Egyptians, that he was the one true God. He ruled over nature. He ruled over the heavens and the earth. See, the Egyptians had a God of the Nile, a god of the sun, and even a goddess named Heek. 
who ca was called the frog goddess. When God showed that he was in control of the Nile River, the sun and the frogs, he was telling the people of Egypt that their gods were false. Today, thousands of years later, when we read this story, we see how powerfully God saved his people to open up a way for Jesus to come. We see in this story that the Israelites, they did nothing to rescue themselves. They couldn't. In and of themselves, they couldn't do anything to defeat Pharaoh and save themselves from this life of slavery. But God intervened. He was the one who set his people free. He was the one that demonstrated the power that was needed to bring his people out of slavery. And God has done the same for you and me. We could not save ourselves. We can't. We can't do enough good things to earn our salvation, to become a child of God. So God sent Jesus. He did what we could not do, doing the work that was needed to bring us from slavery to sin to freedom as his child. Keep practicing that memory verse, and I will see you guys right back here on another Kid Central Online next week. Take care.